Hey, what's up, comic book fans? Welcome back to Comic Book Corner 2.0. And fans, you're with me, Mike Spider Slayer. And guys, today we're going to be talking about the Superior Spider Man issue number 23. And this is continues the Darkest Hours um, story arc. That's right, fans. Great cover here. I love the cover. Uh, here you have Flash Thompson uh, seeing his symbiote abandon him. And he's like, Please come back. I love you. Symbio, please come back. And the symbiote's just taken off on him. So the cover is done by Herberto Ramos. Uh, the book is written by Dan Slott and, and Christos Gage. And um, does the cover stay true to this actual issue? Well, we will see. Uh, first off, the art in the inside the book is done quite well. Uh, I truly enjoy Herberto Ramos's art on Spider-Man. It, it, it does fit the book. And I think as readers, um, we've kind of grown accustomed to his artwork, I would think, by now. Because he's been doing the artwork with Dan Slott in this title for a long time. Since way back in Amazing Spider-Man. Uh, here we get to see some cool pages uh, you have with Goblin. Um, and then you get to see... Um, a couple of uh, pages here with uh, Mary Jane as well. Um, here in this page, you see her holding up and toasting a uh, glass of champagne to represent her club being reopened. Um, you know, she's kind of lengthy, long, like a model, like she should, wearing a short, short skirt. Um, but it, art overall is pretty good in here. Um, uh, what did I think of this week's story? Well, I thought the story was really solid. I, I quite enjoyed it. Um, we continue off where Superior and Venom are doing battle. And um, basically Superior just paralyzed the symbiote. Can't really uh, be controlled by Flash. And, you know, Superior's like trying to manipulate Flash by going, Oh, show me what the symbiote can do. And then he's trying to you know, plan against Flash to destroy him or some reason to come up with to kill him because he feels that his secret is going to be revealed on, on who he is. And, um, you know, the the one thing I have about this issue it, or about the symbiote is that even though it's on Flash, it, like, doesn't even gravitate towards um, Peter Parker's body. I mean, even though it's Superior or, or Doc Ock, it's still Peter Parker's body, and it kind of doesn't recognize it, doesn't go to it right away, you know what I'm saying, at all? So I was kind of surprised about that. Uh, but then you get to see, you know, Flash kind of retaliate by using some gas, and then he tries to escape, and you see the, the suit is, is kind of damaged because of what Superior has done to it, so it disguises itself. Which I must say, I'm not a fan of symbiotes, you know, changing shape and form and becoming this camouflage. You know, I, I just, I don't agree with that. And they've been doing that a lot lately with Venom and Carnage and things like that now here too. Um, so you get to see that in the issue. So uh, Flash Thompson escapes. Uh, we get to see uh, great interactions here between the Green Goblin and uh, Carly Cooper. Um, so it gets you more excited for Comic Nation. And then you get to see some more great uh, character development or supporting cast, which we haven't seen in the past. And now all of a sudden since it's the annual, they're really focusing on the supporting cast. Um, in this issue, you get a lot of uh, Anna Maria, uh, how she wants to impress Aunt May and J. Jonah Sr. Uh, by doing cooking and things like that. And she goes to... Uh, Superior's house and seeing all these spider bots and all this crazy stuff going on in here and she's like, oh, I know you, you know, you work for Spider-Man and this and that and, you know, you think she would catch on. Um, so uh, what happens then is it shifts over a little bit to Mary Jane and you get to see her again in this issue um, and, you know, some people are, you know, calling MJ a slut and I think that I think that may be a little bit extreme. Extreme. I think that when her club got burned down and when uh, Spidey didn't show up, I think she was truly done with him and she saw the firemen show up. And she looks at the normal everyday people now as her hero, and which is Pedro the fireman. And she's offering the police and the fire department all free admission to her club. 
And, you know, I think she really wants to hook up with this Pedro guy. Not because she's a whore, but she looks at him as a hero as she once did to Peter. And she's not getting that anymore through him. So she looks at Pedro. Um, so then you see Captain Wannabe coming in here. And she starts talking with um, Mary Jane. And she st sits there and discusses to stay away from Peter. Um, you get to see great interaction here with Flash and Peter because uh, Flash decides to go to his house and, you know, hides out and whatnot. And he feels, hey, let's go to my best friend's house. Um, and Superior is kind of on to Flash, knows what's going on. Uh, again, we get to see Aunt May. We get to see her leg being fixed by cardiac. Uh, we get to see that nature. And uh, again, as the issue comes along, we see some great dialogue for J. Jonah Sr. here, and, or J. Jonah Jameson, sorry. And uh, he is just at wit's end when it comes to Superior Spider Man. And he wants to bring in the big guns. He wants to get back the Spider Slayer technology. He's going to do at all costs to get Spider Man off the streets because, once again, he's a menace, but this time he's a true menace. Uh, you get to see some heated arguments, which was really great dialogue here between uh, Anna Maria and Aunt May, uh, which I thought was quite funny. Um, and then um, the key thing of this issue is, and those are major spoilers if you don't want to see it, just fast forward a little bit, is that Superior Spider-Man offers Flash Thompson a way of getting his legs back, just like how he fixed Aunt May. But really it's a ploy to um, get the symbiote off of Flash, to extract it, him, uh, the symbiote from Flash. Uh, so he promises new legs and things like that, and he checks for you know things that are not right, and he goes through the machine, and you see that right away it, he's you know it's getting taken off of him. And before this project actually happened, Flash was kind of hesitant about the whole thing. So you get to see what happens, and then you get to see the symbiote. It gets contained in the cylinder, and uh, but Flash got legs. He's got prosthetics now, and he can walk. And the next thing you see is that. Flash is like, what are you doing? You can't do this. I had this under control, blah, 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 blah. And then the next thing you see is that the symbiote breaks out of the cylinder and it takes over Superior's body. And now we have Superior Venom. So interesting stuff here. Um, you know, it kind of made it hard to see if the symbiote took over Superior Spider-Man. Uh, but it looks like it based off like how you see the arms here and things like that. Uh, it looks like that's it is him and uh, you know he calls himself superior venom. So interesting stuff here. Um, I really like this issue. One of the most all around it issues of Spider Man I have read uh, in a while. It has some mix of nice action. It's got one of my favorite villains or I guess good guys now, which is Venom. Um, you know, it's got great dialogue between the supporting cast of the characters all the way around between Anna Maria, um, you got Mary Jane, you got Aunt May, you got Jay Jonah, you got Senior in there. I mean, you have everybody in here. Um, it'll be interesting to see how they get or how they deal with this suit on Superior. And is the symbiote going to kind of catch on that this is not really Peter Parker. So this is going to be interesting because all the memories are erased and the symbiote can read what goes on in the brain. So uh, it, it's going to be interesting here. This is I might be a player. I'm not sure. I'm hoping it kind of is. Um, but I really enjoyed this issue. I really, really am. Now the one thing that I'm seeing a lot of these days is Aunt May. We saw her in the annual. We saw her in the last issue. We saw a lot of her in this issue. And they're focusing a lot on her. Here's a thought. And I'm just throwing this out here because I always do these crazy theories uh, when it comes to this title. Do you guys think that maybe Aunt May might actually die when Co Goblin Nation comes around? It's just a thought. Um, do you think the character actually needs to be around anymore. Again, she's a major character, pretty much a you know a thing for Peter Parker. But my theory was uh, that the Green Goblin is Peter Parker. Would die 
as we find out that Peter Parker is Green Goblin, you know, and he rips off the mask, and he's like, no, and you see her dead on the floor. I don't know how it would happen, but with this whole Goblin War thing going on, I don't know. But anyway, with this issue, um, again, really good. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how it concludes, how they deal with the symbiote, um, see if we find out any more secrets about Superior, and uh, yeah, I really loved it. I really enjoyed it. It's it's great to see Venom on this title again. Uh, you know, it's a lot better story than his own individual title, and I think he kind of fits a supporting character, a supporting cast in this book. Uh, so there you have it, guys. That's the gist of it. Uh, I thought, sorry, this review is a little lengthy, but you know how I get when it comes to Spider-Man. And guys, tell me your thoughts below on the, my whole Aunt May theory. Do you think she belongs anymore? Do you think she might die coming up soon? Uh, and guys, thanks for watching Comic Book Corner 2.0. And until the next comic book review, this is Mike Spider Slayer signing off. Thanks for watching, everyone. See you soon. Bye.